Welcome back to topic three for Algebra 2, Write, Solve, and Graph Linear and Compound Inequalities. In part two, we're going to focus more on compound inequalities. There are two kinds of compound inequalities, an intersection or an and compound inequality, and a union or an or compound inequality. For and compound inequalities, a number is a solution to the compound inequality if the number is a solution to both inequalities. Whereas with or inequality, compound inequalities, a number is a solution to the compound inequality if the number is a solution to at least one of the inequalities. So it does not need to be a solution to both of the inequalities. It could be, but at least one of them. Let's look into some examples. Our first example here is negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 2. Now this is an and compound inequality. And compound inequalities may be written as two separate inequalities or, like this, kind of smushed together. If we look at our number line, we can label negative 1 and 2. Since it is negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 2, we can write an open circle. And since x is literally sandwiched in between negative 1 and 2, that is where we are going to shade. This inequality can also be written as x is greater than negative 1 and x is less than 2. However, oftentimes with and compound inequalities, you will see it in this kind of like smushed format. In example number two, we have x is less than negative 1 or x is greater than or equal to 2. Or compound inequalities are like two separate inequalities. So I'm going to first graph the left-hand side where we have negative 1. This is an open circle and x is less than negative 1, so I'm going to shade to the left. Then we have x is greater than or equal to 2. Since it's greater than or equal to, we have a closed circle, and I'm going to shade to the right because it could be 2 or it could be bigger. So this is an or inequality. Oftentimes, and inequalities, you will shade in between the two numbers, and or inequalities, you would shade in opposite directions. However, this is not always the case, so I highly, highly, highly recommend paying attention to the problem and reading it carefully. And thinking back to what we talked about here, where it needs to satisfy both of the inequalities or at least one with the respective and or, or compound inequalities. Let's look into some more complex examples. So here we have negative four is less than six x minus 10, which is less than or equal to 14. This is an and compound inequality because it's in that smushed format. So just like solving linear equations, what we do to one side, we do the other. However, with inequalities, we have multiple sides. So we need to do it to all the sides. If it's helpful, feel free to draw a vertical line to separate in between the different sides of the inequalities. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add 10, because we see a negative 10. So we're going to do the, add the inverse, or use the inverse, which is positive 10 and add it to every single side. On the left-hand side, negative four plus 10 is six. Then we have less than six x. Negative 10 plus 10 is zero. And 14 plus 10 is 24. Now we still want to isolate x, so we're gonna divide every single side by six and get one is less than x, which is less than or equal to four. Now we can graph this on the number line. One has an open circle, whereas four has a closed circle. And since it's an and, and compound inequality where x is lying in between, that is where we're going to shade. Moving on to the next example, we have three x minus two is less than or equal to negative 11, or 2x plus 8 is greater than 16. So this is clearly an or compound inequality. We're going to solve each inequality separately and then put them together on the graph. With this first inequality, we're going to add 2 to both sides. 
and we have 3x is less than or equal to negative 9. Now in order to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 3. But notice here how this is a positive 3. Even though we see that negative 9 here, there is no need to flip the sign because we are still either multiplying or dividing by a positive number. In this case, we are dividing by a positive 3. Our answer will give us x is less than or equal to negative 3. For the other inequality, we have 2x plus 8 is greater than 16. We can subtract 8 from both sides and get 2x is greater than positive 8. Now divide both sides by a positive 2 and we get x is greater than 4. So this is our final answer. x is either less than or equal to negative 3 or x is greater than 4. So we can mark it on our inequality, on our number line. We have x is less than or equal to negative 3, so we have a closed circle and we're going to shade to the left. Or we have x is greater than 4. So we can mark a 4 on our number line with an open circle, and since x is greater than, we're going to shade to the right. So this is an example where we also see the or is in opposite directions. Moving on to number 3, we have 1 is less than 2x plus 3 and negative 2x plus 3 is less than 19. So this is an and inequality, and compound inequality, I'm sorry. But it's written separately and it's not written smushed. So we're still going to solve them separately and then graph them together. On the left-hand side, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides and get negative 2 is less than 2x. Again, we're going to divide by 2, but this is a positive 2. Even though we see that negative 2 in the numerator, it is not going to affect our inequality. So we get negative 1 is less than x. Now, negative 1 is less than x. Here we have the variable written on the right-hand side. We're so used to seeing that variable on the left-hand side. No worries, we can change it and write it the other way. If negative 1 is less than x, in other words, x is the bigger value. If you think back to the alligator-crocodile comparison where the inequality eats the larger number, so x is greater than negative 1. Same exact thing. Now, I'm going to graph this separately below, just because I think it will help us ultimately graph the compound inequality together at the end. If we mark negative 1, this is an open circle, and if x is greater than or equal to negative, I'm sorry, just greater than negative 1, we're going to shade to the right. For our other inequality, we have negative 2x plus 3 is less than 19. Let's subtract 3 from both sides to get negative 2x is less than 16. Divide both sides by a negative 2. Now here we are dividing by a negative one number. So our inequality is going to be x is greater than negative 8. So our inequality flipped because we had a negative number that we divided by. If we want to graph this below, we have our negative 8 open circle, and if x is greater than negative 8, we're going to shade to the right. Now, if this is a compound inequality, and it's an and compound inequality, as a reminder, our solutions need to satisfy both inequalities. So in other words, let's try to think of some examples that are both larger than negative 1 and larger than negative 8. Some examples that are both larger than negative 1 and larger than negative 8 are 0, 10, 52. We can also have negative 1 half, negative 8 ninths, all of this. If we look at these examples here that are possible solutions, they are all greater than negative 1. So the solutions that satisfy both greater than negative 1 and greater than negative 8 is really just greater than negative 1. 
if we were to also put these two inequalities on top of each other on the number line, the part that they would both cover on the number line would be negative one or greater. So it's a little bit hard for me to do it on this screen, but if you were to physically draw these out and place on separate pieces of paper and place them on top of each other, a section that would be double shaded that they would both share would be all the numbers that are greater than negative one. So notice here how this example varies so differently from this example, as we don't have that shading in between the numbers but really it just kind of looks like one inequality in the end. Thank you for watching part two of topic three for algebra two, write, solve, and graph linear and compound inequalities.